Hello everyone, welcome watching the video. In this video, I'm going to walk through a AI engine A to Z bare metal flow tutorial and show you how to run a bare metal application on AI engine in Whitey's. Now, let's take a look at where this tutorial is located at. So here is the link for Zarling's public GitHub repo, and it has different categories under it. All the AI engine related tutorials are under the AI engine development category. Let's take, take a look at what tutorials are under it. So there are three different categories, design tutorials, feature tutorials, and introduction tutorial. The tutorial that I'm going to talk about is under the feature tutorials. The first one, AIE A to Z, is the one that I'm going to walk through in this video. So this is an um, end-to-end -end flow to show you how to run a bare metal host applications using AI engine kernel and PL kernels. So this tutorial is based on 2020.2 Whitey's environment. And you will see that there are different steps included in this tutorial. In this video, I'm going to bypass the first step, which is the custom platform creation step because we will have separate video talking about this topic. So I'm going to start from the ANG application creation step and run through the whole flow until running the system on board. Let's take a look at how to run this tutorial. Firstly, before launching Vitis IDE, make sure you have set up the Vitis environment and the XRT. Then use Vitis command to launch the Vitis IDE. It will ask for a workspace folder and choose the workspace that you created and click launch. It will enter the welcome page and it lists some of the commonly used commands. Click the create application project to create a new Vitis application project. And the first page is a brief overview about this wizard. And if you click next, it will list the platforms that are available for your choice. It may take some time depending on um, how many platforms are located in your uh, search area. Since the platform that this tutorial is targeting is created in a different folder, so it's not listed here by default. So let's add it into the repository by clicking the Add button in the upper right corner. And choose the folder for your platform. So here is the folder that I created the platform at. So click Open to add the platform into the repository. So now you should see that this base platform VCK190 is already listed here. So let's select this platform and click Next. In this page, it asks for a name for the new application project. So let's input a name for it. And it will also automatically create a system project for you and uh, automatically select the target processor, which is the AI engine in this scenario. And let's click Next. And it in this page, you are going to select a domain for your project. And for an AI engine processor, the domain that we can choose is the AIE runtime. So you don't have to 
change anything in this page and let's just click next and here is asked for um, a template that you want to build the application project and it already has some built-in templates installed in the tool um, so in this tutorial I will select the simple template which is a two kernel graph um, with the window based data communication so select the simple template and click finish to finish the application project creation phase so you will see that it's pretty simple and just a few uh, mouse clicking and to create the whole application project let's take a look at the application project in the explorer window it lists all the folders and the files under each sub project for example here is the ai engine application project we just created and there are two folders under it one is data the other one is src so generally the source code for kernel and graph are under the src folder for example let's open up the graph code so this is the main function and the graph definition are in this code and the kernel source code are under the kernels subfolders it defines the actual a function of the AIE kernel and under the data folder there are two text files one is called input.txt file which is the input to the simulation and the other one is the golden file which is used to verify if the simulation result is correct or not So now I'm going to build the AIE project in emulation AIE mode. Firstly, uh, you need to make sure that the active build is selected as emulation AIE. And then you can right click on the emulation AIE build in assistant window and select build so this will build the AI engine application project and the information will be printed out in the console window so you can pay attention to the possible warnings or errors if any it will take for a while to complete the compilation all right, the compilation has completed successfully. And we are going to run the emulation on the AIE project by right click on the same build and select run and then select launch AIE emulator. So this will launch the AIE emulation on this single graph. It will take uh, one or two, a couple of minutes to complete, um, depending on your server status. The emulation process has completed, and we are going to compare the output result with the golden result to see if the simulation result is correct or not. The output file are all under the emulation AIE folder and it's under the AIE simulator output there is a output.txt file which is the output generated by the emulation procedure so you can select this txt file together with the golden file and right click it and then choose compare with each other after transformation. So 
Now we are going to execute a command to remove the time step in the output file. To do this, you can click on the predefined filters and add the remove time step commands. And then click OK. So this will remove the time step of the output file and compare it with the golden file. If there is no difference between those two files, it will pop up window and show you that the results are matched. Okay, this concludes the episode one of this video. In the upcoming episodes, I'd like to show you how to create a PL kernel project and a PS application project and to run the hosted whole system on a VCK190 boards. So please keep an eye on the update and thank you for watching.